views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most inspired visionaries on the planet in lighthearted, lively dialogue. Join us as we explore the expansive nature of reality in a down-to-earth way, offering you insights and tools empowering you to become that bright light you're meant to be now here's your host christine upchurch hello everybody welcome to the christine upchurch show where we have stellar conversations to illuminate your journey i'm speaking you to, to you today from a uh, very cloudy seattle here at hubbard radio on kknw am 1150 you might be listening somewhere out on the east coast on wblq am 1230 somewhere in one of the cities across the United States on cable radio network, in one of the many stations in Australia, or anywhere around the world on Transformation Talk Radio. And as we know, I've personally documented, we've got listeners from over 60 countries just getting into the archives. So we know that you're worldwide. Wherever you're listening from today, I'm so glad you joined us here today. And you're going to be happy. Stay tuned because we've got an interesting show coming up. But before I get into that, I'd like to say hello to my better half here in the studio who allows you to hear these conversations, Mr. Benny Mathers. Hi, Benny. Good day, Christine. All the dials and uh, pots are aligned appropriately for your show today, and the satellites are all in orbit. Oh, good. I did it all today, specifically. This is a big day. Well, if I had to be responsible for that today, it's just the way (laughs) my mind is, I'm not sure that I, I... Anybody would be hearing, except you here. But, you know, I'm so grateful for what you do. Pleasure. Pleasure being here for you. And and the technology. Yeah, we like to thank the technology gods for sure. Yeah, yeah. And um, I want to just offer an announcement before I get into the show, because I have a tendency. I I used to wait until the very end of the show to do the announcements, and I always so enjoy my conversation. I can't seem to stop in time. And you're tired of me screaming at you saying, get back to the beginning. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you never Those scream. days are over. No, you, never, I know. you make funny faces. and you That's do, probably like, what it is. You right? gesticulate, but, you know, you, you don't <laughs> <Right>. yell. <laughs> a lot of hand movements that That's you're right. like, I don't That's like right. those. What are you doing? You're and, confusing me. Just for the record, they've always been very polite hand movements. Yeah, they're not the other gestures. <laughs> yes, they're yes. very polite. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. My mom's listening. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to let everybody know that I'm going to be on the Dr. Pat show on Monday talking about the top 10 myths about spirituality. I happen to think that there are a lot of things that we buy into as spiritual that are actually preventing us from experiencing our spirituality. So I'm writing a blog about it, and I'm going to be talking to Pat about it on Monday at 10 a.m., the top 10 myths about spirituality. I hope you tune in then. Um, And if not, you can always get it on my website later. But anyway, enough of that. We're going to be talking about the the interesting guest we have on today who has has been on before. It's fascinating information. He's an interesting combination of um, the mainstream and the very alternative in terms of what he has offered to the world. And and I just love that about him. Uh, We're talking about Paul Selig. He is an author. He's a medium. Um, He has written several books. You know, I Am the Word, the book of love and creation. The Book of Knowing and Worth, and he's got a new book out called The Book of Mastery, and we're going to talk about what mastery is and how we go about that. He received his master's degree from Yale, so, you know, he's got a few smarts there, Um, and back in 1987, he had a spiritual experience that kind of shifted his path. He opened up to so much more, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, and he has turned into this, this psychic, clairvoyant, you know, channel, empath who has served people in a variety of ways with this information that he can tap into. He's the subject of a short documentary uh, called Paul and the Word. He's been featured on the A&E Biography Channel series, The Unexplained, and he's appeared on Coast to Coast AM. Um, you know, He's taught at Kripalu, which is a place I love, the Omega Institute, Esalen, and he's currently faculty on, at, at NYU, he directs the Master of Fine Arts in Creative Writing program at Goddard College. He lives in New York City, and he's got a private practice as an intuitive. I'd like to welcome to the show Paul Selig. Paul, welcome back. 
Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. You know, um, I, I find your books really fascinating. It's, it's not the kind of thing where I could just sit down and read it cover to cover. You know, it's not a, like, okay, I've got a guest on Friday morning, thir- Thursday night, I'm just going to open the book and, and read it from, from front to back because it's got such depth. And it feels like when, when I read portions of it, not only does my conscious mind need to struggle sometimes to understand some of these things, but it feels like on an energetic level, something is shifting. And so I really want to find out how you've gone from more mainstream to producing, channeling through information that is, seems to be affecting people on a very deep level. So how did I go from mainstream to this? Well, you know, I've been doing this work in one form or another probably for, gosh, it's over 20 years now, maybe 25. Uh But I was doing it very quietly. You know, I I actually recently left um, both of my academic appointments at NYU and at Goddard College. You did? To do this full time. Good for you. But that's because, you know, over the last five years or so since the channel books started to become known, I have been outed, you know, as a Uh channeler, you know, and I really kind of kept it to myself for the most part. Goddard, where I ran a a master's program, was a progressive school, and and that was okay. And NYU, it really just didn't have any bearing Uh on what I was doing, except I know in the last few years, you know, my students were were Googling me, and, you know, there's there's YouTube videos of me channeling all over the Internet at this point. So it was kind of silly to pretend that nobody knew. But it really has been a passage that's continuing until this day. I was raised not to believe in this stuff. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I was kind of an atheist, you know, growing up. I just thought this was for stupid people. Although uh-huh. I think I had an interest in, in the paranormal. Sure. Um, but my own passage really has been accompanied by phenomena um, from the very beginning of it, which is one of the things that's kept me working. And I'm, I'm grateful for that because... You know, as you said, you know, the books themselves, which are channeled by my guides, there are energetic transmissions that work on the reader. Right. I get worked on, too. So the feeling of the vibration or the seeing mm-hmm. the lights around people or or the ability to serve as a clear sentient and feel what's going on in somebody else's emotional body or physical body have all been things that have propelled me forward and, and finally into a place of, of a little bit of visibility. Mm-hmm. Right. So, Paul... Do you feel that there's something going on on the planet right now that is causing people to seek a better connection? Yeah, I think everything's falling apart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that'll do it. Yeah. I think that the way that we've done things doesn't seem to be working that well. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I don't know that if it's I don't know necessarily that it's a hunger for spirituality, but I think when you when you look at a world, you know, where things seem to be operating, you know, a bit out of control, I mean, it makes one, I think, want to to, to, to position oneself differently mm-hmm. or to a place of comprehension. I mean, I'm not suggesting that the world is falling apart, but I mean, some days it kind of looks like it. Yeah. And, you know, for me, and I can only speak for myself truthfully, you know, I didn't get into this stuff because my world was was going along so nicely. Uh I was about a year out of Yale and hit a real wall. Um, I had a list of things that I thought would make me okay in the world, and I got the whole list. Mm -hmm. It was a flashy list. None of them made me okay. And, you know, I needed to come to terms with some things about myself and the way that I was living my life. Mm -hmm. And I began praying, frankly, is what happened, Mm -hmm. which was not part of my upbringing. Right. Most atheists don't pray, yes. Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, and then I heard a voice telling me to get my act together and Mm -hmm. how to do it. And that was the beginning for me, you know, of of, of a journey that's ongoing. But I don't think, you see, I think when we have the comfort of the known and the known is working, Mm -hmm. We, we tend to be complacent in what we have. Yes. Yes. And it's when things that we thought were going to save us stop saving us that I think that we begin to, to move towards what we haven't yet claimed or examined, which for right. many people, I think, is their own true nature or their own spiritual self. Right. And I know that um, 
you know, talking to students and, and clients about these things, it's, it's almost like it's not just the external world that, that's falling apart. It's, it's very much about what you're talking about, your experience, you know, after yeah. you got out of Yale, that everything looks fine on the surface. They're married to the same person. They're in the same job. They're, they're, they're doing things that seem to be enough before, and suddenly it's yeah. not. And it's rather yeah. discombobulating because it, it's, it's like something inside them is saying you're off kilter when they've been doing everything that helped them find balance before. Um, so it's, it's less about the external chaos, although there is plenty of that, and more about the oh. internal imbalance. Well, you know, the guys that I work with have said from the beginning, since they first started dictating these books, which was in 2009, uh-huh. they said that, you know, humankind is at a time of reckoning. Uh-huh. And they say that a reckoning is a facing of oneself and all mm-hmm. of one's creation. Oh, say that again, and, Paul, because that gives me chills head to toe. Yeah, a reckoning is a facing of oneself and all of one's creation. And they say everything that's been created in fear needs to be recreated in a higher way. And, you know, I understand this process because I've been in it and I'm still in it. And I'm Uh not saying that Uh I'm enlightened. I don't pretend to be anything other, you know, than a guy with with certain capacity Uh to do this work. But, you know, I know what they're teaching now and what they're channeling about now and this, the, the new book that's coming through. I mean, they're calling it the Book of Truth. Ah. And they're saying when you align to truth, all of those things that are not in truth have to be transformed. Right. And they say truth cannot hold a lie. And I think many of us are waking up to the reality that many of the choices that we've made you know, and how we see these choices played out collectively, uh-huh. you know, perhaps in in government or in how we treat one another in society. I mean, all of these things that are clearly, you know, not in alignment with truth. And my guys speak of truth as divine truth, mm-hmm. you know, the truth of who we all are as divine beings. Right. All of that stuff's getting rattled in a big, big way. Yeah. But I think the individual has her own experience with this as well, you know. Uh-huh. I mean, suddenly when I realize that the life that I'm living is the life that I was expected to have and not the life that's giving me joy or giving uh-huh. me a sense of my own inherent worth, right. um, it gets more challenging. It's harder and harder and harder, I think, right now to stay asleep. Yeah. And I think some people in some systems perhaps are deeply entrenched in remaining asleep. Mm-hmm. And therein lies some of the disturbance that we're seeing in the world. Oh, it's beautifully said. We have to go to a quick break, but more with Paul Selig when we return here on the Christine Upchurch Show. Join the Pacific Northwest EFT Tappers at the 6th Annual Tappers Gathering, March 19th at Bastyr University in Seattle. You will learn EFT applications, forge a strong community, and share healing stories. The event raises money and awareness for EFT tapping scientific research. Net proceeds go to our 501c3 nonprofit to further prove the efficacy of EFT. Bring your cards and information for a fun and inspiring day of networking. Visit nwtappersgathering.com or call 360-661-6877. Serenity Bliss Holistic Spa is a complete approach to wellness. Serenity Bliss offers integrated therapies for whole body health. From facials to massage, from laser skin treatments to herbal wellness, from chiropractic care to energy healing. We work with teens who want to put their best face forward, adults of all ages who want to maintain that youthful glow, and anyone who wants to enjoy vibrant well-being head to toe. Serenity Bliss Holistic Spa is bringing the European approach to restoring natural beauty and wellness here to the Seattle area. Located on the east side, off the beaten path, yet just minutes from the freeway. If you'd like to experience the joy of relaxation, skincare excellence, and total wellness, then come experience your Serenity Bliss. To learn more or to schedule an appointment, visit SerenityBlissHolisticSpa.com. That's SerenityBlissHolisticSpa.com. 
or call 206-229-0086. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Talk Radio. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. As a former research statistician, my scientific background is what many would call sensible. For more than a decade now, I have been working in the field of energy medicine, facilitating sessions and teaching around the world. People from the mainstream often ask me, how did a sensible woman like you end up working in such an alternative field? Implicit in their question is the underlying assumption that the field of subtle energy, such as energy healing and intuition, isn't sensible. But I believe it is very sensible. Even scientists are able to measure aspects of this. Approaching life from an energetic perspective brings us new opportunity for healing and transformation. And from a practical standpoint, even if you can't rationally explain how something works, if you experience a shift from it, then doesn't it make it pretty sensible? Please visit StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Welcome back to the Christine Upchurch Show here on KKNW, WBLQ, CRN, and Transformation Talk Radio. I'm having a conversation today with author, medium, Paul Selig. His latest book is called The Book of Mastery. Now, Paul, before the break, you were talking about how we're finding discomfort because we are, so many of us are not living our truth. And I think that if we're all really honest with ourselves, even those of us who who feel really aligned with our mission, the, every single moment of every single day, we're not necessarily living our truth fully. Um, what is it about mastery? What, what, what is mastery and, and why are we being asked to step into it? Well, you know, it's interesting because my guides continue teaching after they dictate books. And the book of mastery was dictated last year, and uh-huh. they're still teaching it, but they've moved beyond it as well. So how I may answer this question may be different than how I might have understood it a year ago. Uh-huh. Now, the, the divine self, or the truth of who we really are, which is the purpose of all of the guide's work, is to get us in recognition of this, and then in alignment to it. So they say that the divine self, they say there's different names for it. They call it the infinite self, the Christ itself, the Uh true self. But it's the truth of who we all are, the aspect of the creator that is in us, that seeks to be realized as, by, and through us in material form. Now, the true self, they say, seeks purview, which essentially... What they're saying is is that we're really not that separate from the landscape that we exist in. We think we are. We think we're separate from one another, and uh-huh. we're separate from, from everything that we see, but we're not. And the guides say that because we can see it, we're in relationship to it. Because we're in witness to anything, we're in relationship to it. And how we perceive whatever we see is informing the physical reality of it. Okay, so now, can, can you give me an example? Yeah, because I'm, I'm sure that, that's 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 really heavy. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm having a little hard time hearing you. So if I step on you on your on your words, forgive me because it's just me. I'm, I'm talking and, and listening at the same time. Um, when I see something on the television, mm-hmm. I'm in relationship to it. Uh-huh. If I decide it's bad, I'm in relationship to a bad thing, and my uh-huh. consciousness is informing it and supporting it in its quote-unquote badness. So how anyone witnesses anything is bringing vibration to it. Uh What my guys would say, I think, is if you can see it, you're in vibrational accord to it because it really couldn't be there in, in agreement with you without that, that we're actually all collectively participating in this landscape. Uh-huh. Now, 
Now, the good news is that that means that we can transform it through lifting our vision right. or through knowing who we are. So, for example, how my small self or the personality self might witness or perceive my losing a job, mm -hmm. which is calamity and terror and blame and fear, whatever the stuff I want to pull, right. would be perhaps vastly different than how the true self would perceive it. Uh -huh. And the true self operates in a much higher way. It holds a higher vision. Now, if you can imagine holding this higher vision for the entire world um, or through, for everything that you see, it becomes a radically different experience of being. Mm -hmm. And they also say, and this is a very simple definition, you can't be a victim and a master at the same time. Oh, I and like say, that. Yeah. And they say, you know, because something has been created, they say everything you see around you, I mean, just imagine the room that you're in or the listeners, you know, the rooms that you're in, everything that you see around you was created by somebody else or given a name by somebody else. I mean, somebody called a chair a chair right. and a desk a desk. And essentially what we're, we're living in is this museum of, of other people's ideas of what things are. And when you begin to realize who you are in a higher way, they say everything that's been created can then be recreated. But as long as we're adhering to what we've been taught and what we've been taught things are or mean, all we're going to do is replicate it. So here's right. a really simple example. Okay. We've been living on a planet that's been at war for since the beginning, it seems, of recorded time. So we go about our business and we cannot imagine being in a world without war uh -huh. because it's always been here. But that's what we get. So consequently, we continue to get war. You know, our, our agreement is to be co-creating a plane where this is going on. And I don't mean consciously co-creating. I mean by expectation. Sure. You know, so, you know, what the guys have been saying lately is, you know, you're all dining out on yesterday's dinner. Uh -huh. You know, you expect to get what you've had. And until you realize that something else can be made, you're not going to claim your, your true inheritance. And they say that the true inheritance is the divine self in its purview, which is mastery. So how is it that we shift that co-creative process um, what is it that we should do in terms of our perception and our relationship with self to help transform it into a new reality? Well, let me see if I can talk about this. You know, I'm, I'm, it's been an interesting day so far, and I travel today, but, you know, what the guides, I think, would say is that it's done in choice. And the, the first thing I think that has to be realized is that we're worthy of this. Mm. You know, we don't believe that we're worthy of who we truly are. Now, the guides that I work with are working with energetic attunement. So the books themselves are these vibrational things that seem to work directly with the readers. If you go online, you read the reviews on Amazon, you'll see people saying things like, I'm reading the book and my body is vibrating. I mean, uh -huh. That's, you know, been going on since the beginning. And, and that's my experience, thing. too, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, but there's phenomena with this. But you see, the attunements that they're working with are to support us in our own realization. And, you know, the metaphor that they've used for me and for all of us is that we're all radios. So when I'm channeling, I'm a radio and I'm playing the guide's broadcast. I'm taking their dictation. If I'm working psychically, I may be tuning into you and seeing what you want to tell me at a higher level or at a personality level uh -huh. or, you know, whatever aspect of you want to come forward. But the attunements the guides work with, which are, are done through language and tone, vibration they say what they're what they're working on with us is tuning the radios that we are to play the higher broadcast that's already present okay so if you're playing the higher broadcast you're essentially attuned and then you can move into alignment with it they say you know you begin playing the music that's already been there but that you haven't been able to access mm -hmm. So, you know, there are a number of attunements, and the one in the Book of Mastery, which is a very simple one, is I know who I am, I know what I am, I know how I serve, I am here, I am here, I am here. Now, I know who I am means I know who I am as the divine self, the true self. Right. And by the way, the attunement is said by the true self, so it's not Paul, the guy in the chair, uh -huh. you know, who 
who needs another cup of coffee is saying, I know who I am. Uh-huh. It's the divine self claiming that. I know what I am, which means in manifestation as the divine self. And then how we serve, the guides say, is how we're most fully expressed. The claim of mastery, they say, I am here, I am here, I am here, is the true self claiming its purview. So again, that's not Paul saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Right mm-hmm. now I happen to be in Annapolis. I'm not saying I'm here in Annapolis. Right. It's the divine self announcing itself in, in, in purview, which simply, as I can understand it, means in its expression as the true self, the master self. So um, does it help to shift us vibrationally, not only to, to read this information, but to speak it? I, I hear it does, yeah. I mean, I think reading it will work with you. Uh-huh. I, think, I don't think, you know, I used to teach, I taught at NYU for 25 years. And, you know, I, can, I used to work energetically while I was teaching, but I wasn't doing it aloud. I was doing mm-hmm. the claims um, silently. You know, there's a claim from the first book, I am word through all that I see before me, mm-hmm. which essentially means the action of the creator is in all that I see before me. And I feel the room lift. You feel the vibration of the whole room lift. It was uh-huh. a wonderful feeling. It was always a better class when I remember to do it. Right. Um, it's not magic. It's simply alignment. Uh-huh. So I don't think the I don't think saying it aloud is needed. But the guides call these things claims of truth, and I think this is important to understand. And it they is, say it, that it, when it, I'm sorry, when something is true, it's always true. Mm-hmm. So when the divine self says, "I know who I am," the divine self always knows who he or she is. Right, but it's it is. It, my sense of it is that it brings it vibrationally into our reality more. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. 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 We have to go to another quick break, but more with this fascinating conversation about how to step into mastery and embrace truth with Paul Selig in just a few moments. What is a master soul gardener? With Nomi Bahar, you can be one too. Her revolutionary Gates of Power method is a comprehensive program that addresses every aspect of yourself and gives you the tools to tend to the seeds of your soul's garden. Let Nomi guide you through and beyond what's holding you back and help you embrace the life you've always dreamed of. To learn more about upcoming classes and workshops, visit gatesofpower.com today. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit glennarice.com. Called the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award winning host Dr. Pat Basili is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Pat Show.com for listening times in your area. I'm Peggy Snow with another Stellar Reflections Minute. Presence, or what we think of as being fully in the moment, is a key element in the process of healing work. As a practitioner facilitating a session, genuine presence takes us out of our heads where we tend to decide what is and maybe what should be for the client and moves us into direct experience where we're available to witness the person in their wholeness. In this receptive realm... Our senses are heightened and expanded, allowing us to perceive what's seeking to unfold and to interact in the moment. There's something profoundly powerful that happens when healing is approached in this simple, pure way. Balance can be restored and healing can take place on multiple levels. If you'd like more information about the services we offer at Stellar Reflections, visit us at StellarReflections.com 
or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome back to the Christine Upchurch Show here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. I'm having a fascinating conversation today with Paul Selig, um, who is a, a, a medium. He channels all sorts of fascinating information that's not just about the information itself. It is vibrational in nature. And he's got several books out. The last one, the latest one is The Book of Mastery. And I understand he's working on a new one. So, Paul... You know, at one point in the last half hour, you were talking about how on some level we we really aren't victims. I think a lot of people are stuck in victimhood. How how, how is this perceived by the divine self and um, how do we shift our perception in this reality? Well, you know, I don't know that I know this. You know, I don't know how, how far I've moved away from that thing. But I mean, my guides are actually talking because you know this is actually what happens when somebody asks a question that I don't know the answer to. They'll sort of, sort of come through with choice. I hear it's choice. How it's just how one perceives the self is always choice. Is always choice. How uh-huh. it's just how they're saying how one perceives the self, like, but in relation to events or relations or relations or world or a world is always choice. Is always choice. The choice is informed. The choice is informed by the talk by what you've been taught. Talk if you've not been taught who you truly are, who you truly are in a higher way, in a higher way. It's quite convenient. It's quite convenient to claim the victim self, to claim the victim self because she doesn't require authority, because she doesn't require authority. The divine self knows who she is. The divine self knows who she is and can conquer all things. I don't know. I just heard that this is what I heard. She knows mm-hmm. who she is. She knows who she is. She doesn't play in fear. She doesn't play in fear. She doesn't fear others. She doesn't fear others. She knows her own worth. She knows her own worth, and she creates it for that, and she creates in accord with that. Uh-huh. And they're saying period. And I should say, just for your listeners, you know, when I when I when I channel, I'm whispering the words as they come and repeat. So that's just how it comes through me. So right, your radio is right. not busted. It's just the transmission <laughs> through me. Yeah, yeah. Or worse, it's not the computer that's busted either. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think that there's an aspect of um, embracing the what has happened to us as something that has been a choice. It, it, it's it's tough for some people because I think that no. think think about all the organizations out there that are su- to support victims, and I'm not saying they're well, they're bad, but I think that they can keep people stuck because it keeps them know. in the perception of that they didn't have like a soul level choice. Well, it's, it's, you know, my guides talk about this a little bit differently because, you know, I'm not one to say you created your illness. That's not uh-huh. what I right. what I say to people. It's not what I necessarily believe. But I do get that everything, the guides would say that everything in our lives we're in energetic accord with uh-huh. because it couldn't exist without it. And energetic accord is agreement or alignment. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I chose it. Who the hell would want to choose this, you know? There may be things that we claim at a higher level in order to learn through. And when Book of Mastery, I will say this, when that was being channeled, um, I was going through a really challenging period. Um, You know, every area of my life that I had sort of trusted in Mm -hmm. was being challenged. And, you know, I mean, physically, my home, you know, my personal life, my business, all of these things were sort of really being rocked. And, you know, the guide started teaching something through this, and it's in the Book of Mastery, and it's one of the most important teachings for me personally in the book. 
but they say, you know, the true self is never persecuted. The divine mm. self cannot be persecuted. Right. It's not possible. Uh-huh. The divine self is never afraid. It's not possible because the true self or the divine self doesn't align to fear because it doesn't exist at that level of vibration. Now, this isn't to deny one's human responses. I was having a rotten old time, and I was Mm -hmm. complaining through all of it. But I was actually learning. So the idea that we're in accord or in agreement with everything in our lives, the guides say, actually puts us into a position of power. Right. And that's the difference. It's a it's a reframing of my relationship to my life. Uh-huh. You know, I had a few things happen during that period that I would have run from. You know, um, I was like, why would I choose this? You know, my back went out. Oh, I wasn't okay. able to walk well, almost at all, really, for a couple of months. Wow. And I was going, why would I choose this? But, you know, my real revelation of that period was I'm not my body. Mm-hmm. That's not what I am, you know. I mean, I was channeling with ice packs down my path. It was, it was a pretty period, but there was a lot going on. Now, did I choose to throw my back out? I don't know. Uh-huh. Did I learn through it? In fact, I did. Was uh-huh. I in accord with that happening? From what I understand, things don't happen without that. Uh-huh. So it's a, it's a different way of looking at things. Right. I know that um, decades ago when I faced the early stages of cancer, um, mm-hmm. I came to the realization that it was serving me in a, in a variety mm-hmm. of ways, both on a personal level. I was, I was working on my doctorate at the time, and I was really close to finishing, but I actually hated what I was doing. So it was kind uh, of like my excuse to get out of school, so to speak. Yeah. You know? and, but also I understood that you know, years before I had heard this, this disembodied voice twice loudly stating that I was a healer, and I was going into mm-hmm. mathematics and mathematical statistics, yeah. and so... You know, I was off path, so it served me in a couple mm-hmm. of different ways, and yeah. and and yet it really was, was a horrible experience because of all the fear that came up and and yeah. how betrayed I felt, but from my body and all that, and yet it was so such an important part of my journey to get me here. Yeah, I my experience was the same, you know, and um, I mean, I didn't do it through physical illness, but I really had to let go of who I thought I was supposed to be in order to do the work that I'm doing now. Right. And I held on pretty tightly. I mm-hmm. really did because I had an investment in, in, in what people thought of me and how I was to be in the world and, you know, what I'd gotten and gotten a degree from from Yale. I mean, all of these things sure. were important to me. And I was still paying the damn student loans. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> Channeling, you know, oh, it made no sense to me at all. Oh, those student but, loans never know, go away, do they? <laughs> well, it finally did, you know. Oh. I mean, that's but then, you know, I had to realize that too that, you know, whatever my debt was was something that I had claimed and could consequently be free of, and mm-hmm. I did it, you know. So, you, I mean, I, I, I've never been one to, well, I shouldn't claim this for myself, I, I've never been one to learn to learn the easy way. Mm-hmm. But I do learn, and I'm grateful, you know, that I can because my life continues to change as a result of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the things that you and the guides were talking about was our um, our fear, our relationship to fear. That that seems to be such an integral part of um, the. How do I put this? The 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 prisons that we create for ourselves in our lives. Um, How. Mm-hmm. How do we shift the relationship with fear? Because as humans, we're going to have the fear, right? Um, how do we shift the relationship so that it's not the driving force? Well, here's the big one, and this is the simplest teaching that the guides have ever given, and it's the one that I follow the most passion. I'm going to say passion, but the most, it's the one that I trust in so much that I always do it when be, because even though I'm tempted not to. Uh-huh. The guides say, you know, the action of fear is to claim more fear. And they say, oh. look at every choice that you made in your life because you were afraid and see what it got you. And they say, it's going to be more fear. Uh-huh. And I look at my life and that's true, you know, and it can be, a, I mean, the guys say, you know, there's not a lie that's ever been told that wasn't told in fear. 
you right. know, and you can't right. be in the vibration of truth and a lie at the same time. And fear finally is a lie uh-huh. because fear is a denial of the divine self, you right. know, finally, finally, finally. Mm-hmm. So how do you get out of fear is to stop making choices based in fear and stop going into agreement with it. I mean, this is what the right. guides say. Everything that you see before you, you're in agreement with. Mm-hmm. If you're agreeing to something, you're shaking hands with it. If you're shaking hands with it, you're holding it. If you don't like what you're holding, stop shaking hands with it uh-huh. and so, claim the higher. So it's kind of know? like it's kind of like if you know if fear showed up as a person and it's somebody you didn't really want to be in relationship with, yeah. then you just say, "Well, there they are," and you you know, say, hello, how are you, meet him at the party, and then you wouldn't want to have anything to do with them. But we have a tendency mm-hmm. to make them our best friends. Well, you know, I mean, the guys gave a lecture last summer that I thought was really interesting. And, you know, they, they don't talk a lot about darkness and uh-huh. things like that. That's not where they go. But they, I was teaching or channeling at the Aspen Institute, and they gave us this lecture. I think it's, it's probably on my website or I don't know, it made it to the Internet somehow at one point because it was transcribed. But they said, you know, you cannot negotiate with darkness. Uh You cannot do it because negotiating with darkness requires you to move into vibratory accord with it. And when you lower your vibration to meet that, you're with it. Uh There you go again. So essentially, I would suggest that it's, it's not shaking hands with it at the party. It's acknowledging that it's there uh-huh. and that it, it it's not real. That would be the big one. You know, we're mm-hmm. taught to be fearful all the time. Oh, yes. You turn on the news, oh, we're being goodness. told to be fearful. When you're taught to be fearful, you want to be protected. When you want to be protected, you give your authority over for somebody else to, to somebody else to do it or an institution or whatever, and right. you move back into that other way of knowing the self, which is perhaps the victim self. I mean, my guides say, you know, our belief that we're separate from our source has outpictured in our belief that we're separate from everybody else. Oh. It's the same oh, thing. Say that know? one more time. We're going to have to go to a break, but I want you to repeat that, Paul, because it's so profound. The belief that we're separate from our source has been outpictured in our belief that we're separate from everybody else. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's that's very profound. We have to go to another quick break, but stay tuned for more with Paul Selig here on the Christine Upchurch Show. We go hide away in daylight. We go undercover, wait up the sun. Got a secret side and play. Are you tired of being tired? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Did you know the adrenal glands, the workhorse of the body? They are the means by which you position yourself in life for whatever comes your way. Tiny but mighty, producing hormones the body uses to promote energy and vitality. These adrenals determine how you respond to stress, and when depleted, the body loses its ability to function powerfully when we need it most. The much-needed adrenaline or epinephrine is not available for emergency situations. Cortisone and cortisol, the longer-acting anti-stress adrenal hormones, can also become depleted due to the pace of our everyday lives. We overwork and undernutrition our most powerful ally that helps us to live the lives we desire. We are able to determine the optimum function of the adrenals and put your system back in balance. Contact us today to feel powerfully energized at 888-777-4232 or visit us at maryjanemack.com. I'm Christine Upchurch, and this is a Stellar Reflections Minute. Years ago when facing cancer, without any immediate treatment options, I sought healing by making various life changes. For a while, I followed a very restrictive diet. I often found myself obsessing about which foods were good and which ones were bad. Then one day I realized I was consuming foods based on fear, fear of not getting well. But I didn't want to make choices out of fear anymore. I decided it was far better for my immune system if I allowed myself to experience the joy that came from, say, eating frozen yogurt, than it was for me to ingest the fear that came from avoiding it. Now, instead of choosing healthy habits based on fear, I try to make choices because they feel right and ultimately bring me joy and ease. How many of your healthy habits are really based on fear? 
please visit StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999-9836. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Pat. The ancient Inca root vegetable maca is world-renowned for its wide array of health benefits. As a family-run company of true maca specialists, the maca team's mission is to provide you with fresh, organic, premium-quality maca powders at a fair price. Amazing. All of the products are always organically grown, fair-traded, GMO-free, fresh, and potent. So don't take my word for it. Experience the life-changing benefits of maca today. Visit themacateam.com. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. Welcome back to the Christine Eptrich Show here on KKNW and Transformation Talk Radio. Uh, talking to Paul Selig. And Paul, you know, this hour is flying by. I want to make sure you have an opportunity to share with our listeners how they can connect with you. Thank you. Um, my website is my name. It's paulselig.com, P-A-U-L-S-E-L-I-G. And um, there's an active calendar up there. I travel a lot. My guides actually um, are teaching the workshops that I do. So um, upcoming workshops include Chicago, Atlanta. I'm going to be at the Esalen Institute in Big Sur, California Uh next week. Um, I do uh, every Wednesday night uh, a live stream uh, channeling. It's uh, their ongoing classes. Um, They're in short series of four and five weeks, but you can sign up for one or for all. Uh Um, But it's really a laboratory for what my guides are teaching. In fact, they they delivered a piece of the new book in a live stream in front of a couple hundred people last Wednesday. So it's an exciting forum, and people can ask questions of the guides as well. But all the information is on my site and um, information on readings as well. Wonderful. So, Paul, you know, I think that... um when we're in human form, so much of the fear and darkness comes up within the context of personal relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, do your guides share like what the purpose is of of these interactions that we have with others? Well, I hear opportunities to learn. I'm just saying everything's an opportunity if you wish to be, if you wish it to be, if you see the world. If you perceive your world as school, as school, you will learn a lot. You will learn a lot. If you perceive your life as happening at you, is happening at you. You will not learn so much. You will not learn so much. A relationship is an opportunity to know the self, to know the self, come with another, in consort with another. How you learn and how you learn is dependable. You become is dependable you turn upon what you need to learn to evolve, to evolve. So every relationship I make up is an opportunity to know who and what you are and who they are as well, and who they are as well. When you know who you are in truth, I am a divine being. I am a divine being. You're required to know that the same is true for everybody else, regardless of what they say or do it. Uh-huh. Or how they meet your expectations or not, period. And they're saying, period. Right. So, so I guess. If, if, if this is an opportunity to learn in this school mm-hmm. called Earth, yeah. can we get bad grades? Can we get an F? 
No, I don't think so. Um, I think they're shaking my head. No, they're saying only if you want. <laughs> you know, if you want an F, you can have one. If you want to have, you have the right to an F. That's what you feel you deserve. But you may learn your lessons in different ways. Why mm-hmm. you will learn what you require to evolve through to evolve through depend depends upon what you require in a time of serve you in a timetable that will serve you. We don't operate time. We don't operate in time, but you know yourself through time, but you know yourselves through time. It's the idea of grade. So the idea of a grade, which is time based, which is time based, mm-hmm. I get my lesson. Did I get my lesson? It's a small way. It's a small way of interpreting the teaching. It's right, a small right. way of interpreting the teaching period in the same period. So um, I think that people can be really hard on themselves. And, and yeah. people on those spiritual paths can worry about um, not being good enough, not being worthy of that alignment that, that yeah. you, you, know, you and the guides have been talking about. So how do we get past the, the self-judgment and step into our worthiness and our, our rightful being of living in our truth. Well, you know, the only one that's judging the self is the small self. Do you get okay. that? Yeah. So the small self, the personality self, is judging the personality self, the divine self, and the truth of who you are doesn't go there because she has nothing to prove. Mm -hmm. You know, the true self knows who she is, and she knows her own divine worth. It's the small self that's confused. I mean, I'm I'm not saying I'm there yet, but I do get this teaching. So the whole problem with sort of self-help stuff is that it's the small self trying to fix the small self. Right. And I don't know that that's really how it happens. Uh Now... So the judgment, frankly, well, I don't want to see what, see what they want to say. If you, wish to judge, if you wish to judge yourself, you can listen to, but there's no reason to that judgment. You can learn without judgment. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for yourself to love the self and uh-huh. take it if you wish to take it. Period. 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 And they're saying, period. Now, I, I love know, that. The guy, an opportunity to love yourself. Yeah. I mean, the guys say, you know, again and again, what you judge, you fear. You know, that's it. Uh-huh. And, you know, they they actually also say and have said that we're really frightened of ourselves. And that's a big part of this whole thing, you know. But if you move into this idea that who we truly are is the divine self, and that aligning to that is what supports the transformation not behaving nicely, you know, mm-hmm. or being polite uh-huh. or saying the right words or, or or wearing the right clothing. I mean, this is, you know, my guides actually say that even our idea of what enlightenment is is based in the ego structure. Uh-huh. Because you, you can't know it until you're there anyway. It, 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 it's another level of consciousness. Right. So, you know, my guides talk about the kingdom and they say the kingdom is the awareness of the divine in all manifestations. Uh-huh. The small self doesn't enter. The true self does. So know who you truly are, and then you begin to have that experience. Right, right. Um, Paul, it seems to me that there are a lot of people right now who feel like they are receiving a calling to 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 shift, not only mm-hmm. within themselves, yeah. but to offer something to the world. Do you yeah. feel like there is a, a like a, a, a call, like from some divine level a, a call to arms, so to speak? I, you know, they're shaking my head. No, it's a call. I mean, they're saying it's a call to being something, uh-huh. and in this level of being, you're in service. You are in service because you cannot be, because you cannot not be the divine self. So the divine self is here to be expressed, or be utilized, and will be utilized to call in the world. They're saying to call a new world into being and a new world as we describe it. And the new world as we describe it is one in love, is one in love and awareness of what it's and in awareness of the work of all human beings, all nature, all nature, all you see before you, all you see before you, nothing is outside of the creator. Nothing is outside of the creative but there except what you would put there and even that's not outside. And even that is not outside, period, period. Uh-huh. I'm saying period, period. Right. right. What I get. Yeah. That's that's so fascinating. Um, I yeah. just want to tell people again, it's paulselig.com, P-A-U-L-S-E-L-I-G. The latest book is The Book of Mastery. I'm excited to, to read your new book, um, Paul. You said it's starting to come through now. When yeah. do you think it's going to yeah. be published? 
um, January, wow, you know, is, is my expectation. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. But yep. So, you know, the guide, the books take about 30 days of sittings. So uh-huh. an hour a day at most over the course of 30 days. So, yeah. you know, and then there's no editing involved. So it's really just the transcripts of the channeling to the books. So I don't really write them. I just sit in the chair and close my eyes and, uh-huh. and let them talk. Uh, just. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like you're showing up in a really big way, Paul. And these these Thank books you. are vibrational. They're they've got a lot of um, helpful information, some very profound information as well that affects you on a very deep level. I want to thank you for joining us here today, Paul. I always enjoy my conversations with uh, you, and I think that you have so much to offer. And I thank you for showing up in, in the way that you do. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and I look forward to chatting with you again sometime soon. And those of you who are listening, I look forward to talking to you again sometime soon as well. Bye, everybody. You've been listening to The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey. Each week, this show engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about the transformative healing work of Christine, visit www.StellarReflections.com. And for weekly topics, visit www.TransformationTalkRadio.com. Transformation Talk Radio.com.